Hello world, this is Random Fix, and this is a seven part series on battery packs. So this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And in this video today, I'm gonna to cover with you guys my journey of building these packs and why you should build one and what are the real benefits and give you guys my story and hopefully it helps you guys out in your journey to save some money and make an awesome battery pack for yourself. So you can go ahead and get many years of use in your camper van, at home, whatever you're trying to do. These are actually really great. So I'm going to cover with you guys kind of a layman's version of this battery pack and why you should possibly look at building one yourself. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Random Fix and I've been working on this van here. And it took me 28 days to get it done from dawn to dusk and I absolutely love it so I have 1160 amp hours in this van of lithium iron phosphate batteries and I thought why don't I share this with you guys so you guys can do this a little faster maybe cheaper and I'm gonna go over some of the benefits and what things you should consider so usually when you want to go ahead and power up a device in your camper van, your shed, your cabin, whatever you're trying to go ahead and run, you need some form of energy storage. We call these storage banks, power banks, batteries, whatever you want to call them, but this is what they are. So this happens to be a lithium iron phosphate battery. So this battery is a little different than the one you find in your car. So your car came with a flood acid battery for the last maybe 60 70 years and those batteries are good and they have their use they're good for providing a lot of power for a very few seconds maybe to get a car started and after that they can go ahead and just buffer the load and they do not last as long and they're very heavy and if you can't use the whole battery so you could only use about 50 percent of the battery before you start actually damaging it so if you had a 100 amp hour battery if you went less than 50% of the capacity, potentially you'd be shortening the life of the battery itself. Then we have other batteries. They're called AGM batteries. And this is the one on my Mercedes Sprinter here. And AGM stands for Absorb Glass Matter. And they're a lot better. And they're more of a deep cycle battery in essence. And these two are heavy. And they could only be used for about 50% of the battery's capacity before you actually start damaging them. And they are kind of expensive on this vehicle. This battery runs about $300. And there's another one that actually starts the engine. So this is just an auxiliary battery. And that one is even more expensive. So I don't want to take a chance and keep having to buy these. And this battery is only 70 amp hours. So 70 amp hours divided by two and we get to about 35 usable amp hours. This battery is 280 amp hours, and we can actually use 280 amp hours of the battery. So a lot different there. You could say this is 10 times the battery, and it is. It's lighter, and I'm gonna go over some of the other benefits as well. So we know flood acid batteries don't work. AGM batteries would be too heavy and too expensive to work, especially if you're putting in a vehicle. Remember weight is gonna go ahead and decrease your gas mileage. So we need something that's lighter and can go ahead and last many, many years. So there's lithium batteries and they come in different chemistries. And then there's lithium iron phosphate batteries. The short symbol for them is LFP or LIFEPO4. And that is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Well, these batteries actually last about 4,000 cycles and so you could do the math that could be 10 years on an 80 percent depth of discharge so you don't want to use it 100 percent from zero to 100 you want to maybe use it run it from 20 to maybe 85 or 100 percent and the battery will do pretty well and remember those aren't days those are cycles so 10 years is a really long time for a battery on my new vehicle i had a flood acid battery it didn't even last four years before I had to replace. So the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is the reason why I decided to go ahead and build this pack. So this whole video series is about building these packs. So I'm gonna show you guys how to build these packs, how to make the studs, 
how to go ahead and top balance them, put the BMS on there, how to go ahead and use these apps. And so this is an app. This is the professional version. This is the consumer version. I'm going to cover this with you guys in the video. And then on the last video, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys where to buy everything. Because if you plan ahead, I spent $600 on this battery pack. And this includes the BMS. My secondary BMS, which is awesome. And allows this thing to basically be balanced. And this is why you want a BMS. So BMS stands for Battery Management System. And basically what it does is regulates the batteries so no one cell is too high or too low it controls the charging of the batteries so that way you don't overcharge these and basically destroying the battery and if you overcharge certain lithium batteries they can really turn into big fire bombs and that's why the lithium iron phosphate battery is so nice because it's a lot more resistant to such fire hazards so i like having this especially if i'm sleeping in a vehicle i want to make sure i don't have to wake up in the middle of the night with the fire in the van. So the fire resistance of the lithium iron fast rate battery is a nice attractive feature. So the BMS can also go ahead and detect temperature. And so this one has two sensors and which is really nice because you don't want to charge these batteries when it's below zero or 32 degrees Fahrenheit as you can damage the cells and basically will go ahead and take care of that for you. Another thing that's nice about the BMS right here is it has automatic shut off so if anything is not right or overloads it will automatically shut off basically keep you from damaging your battery here and there's different kinds of BMS's on the market so this is a 150 amp one I happen to have a 100 amp one in these batteries over here and these are common ports so basically you can tell something's common port because it will have a B minus which is going to go to the actual battery negative here and it'll have a C minus. If you have a third port, which is a P minus, that is not a common port BMS. So we're gonna be talking about common port BMSs. And these are the ones I like using. And again, I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and get this for 70 bucks. The batteries for 450 bucks. The secondary BMS for 20 bucks. And you wanna make sure you get the five amp version. I'll cover that with you guys later on. I'm gonna show you guys where to get these, the cables, everything. With a box, $600. So if we broke this down and did the math really quick, we are paying roughly $2.14 per amp hour, which is a really, really great deal. And if we broke it down even further and we went to watt hours, so 280 amp hours equals 3,360 watt hours. So at 3,360 watt hours, we're going to get a price of $0.17 cents per watt hour for this battery bank assembled with all the parts and I calculated about 40 bucks in cables and those kind of things you might not spend that much but at least you know that everything's being accounted for so for 600 bucks you're gonna get yourself a crazy amazing battery and the nice thing is since we're building it ourselves we're gonna do some nice little tweaks and include some bypasses so in case this battery ever runs into a situation where the BMS is out of whack or not sinking correctly and it thinks it's full but it's not really full we're going to be able to bypass that BMS function and actually inject power into here and at the same time this is going to go ahead and balance it our secondary BMS is going to go ahead and balance it and the battery charger itself is going to be a smart battery charger that's made for this battery chemistry so I'm going to have links to everything here below and I'm going to show you guys how to use all this so you don't have to go ahead and fumble through this and basically cost yourself a lot of time and money. For the purpose of simplicity, we're going to be building a 12 volt system. And there's a lot of advantages to 12 volt systems. So, one of them is going to be that you could easily incorporate a lot of existing accessories on the market, like refrigerators, lights, without having to pay top dollar for a 24 or or 48 volt appliance however you do have to do things a little bit different you have to run much thicker cables for a 12 volt system and you're gonna have more voltage drop when you run longer cables if you run a 48 volt system you're gonna go and use a lot thinner cables and you could run a little bit longer and then the other downside of the 12 volt system is you're really capped off with the inverter so you cannot get an inverter that's over 2400 watts 
as there's just not a vast selection of 12 volt inverters that are over 2000 watts they're kind of hard to find and they get to be very very pricey and in case you do want to build a 24 volt system you can go ahead and still use some 12 volt accessories around your project so they have these things called DC to DC converters so this basically takes a 24 volt input and puts out 12 volts and you do not want to go ahead and make this your main power source as whenever you're using any converter you are going to lose efficiency and they also make a step up converter so if you have a 12 volt system and maybe one of your friends gave you a free refrigerator that's 24 volt then you can go ahead and purchase a step up converter and still use that appliance and you're good if you guys want to go ahead and see me build a 24 volt system please leave your comments down below and if i get enough requests i will show you guys how to go ahead and do that too so we'll see you guys on the next video where we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to assemble this battery and if the video was helpful guys go ahead and consider giving the video a thumbs up if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing because this is what i do here i do random things that help out people as I'm learning so if I point out anything during the video it's probably because I made a mistake and I'm just sharing that with you guys and I'm keeping it real I really appreciate you guys watching and you guys will find your next video at the end here so if you guys see all these videos launched at once it's because I didn't want to bother you guys for seven weeks so instead I'm launching all seven videos the same day so that way you guys go ahead and get the benefit right away and we'll see you on the next video if you happen to live in Northern California and you're interested in a battery setup like this, I normally have a few of these extra laying around. So don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll hook you up with a good deal. Thanks.